，测试测试，好。Hello everyone. My name is Yuan Ting. I'm a master's student at National Taiwan University, and I major in computer aided engineering in Department of Civil Engineering. And my co-author is Dr. Lipan Wan. In this video, I'll deliver a step-by-step -step tutorial to unravel the mystery of DeepMind's rainfall forecasting model. The model we are going to introduce is the generative models of radar proposed by researchers in DeepMind in 2021. This model achieves a great success in the field of short-term rainfall now casting. The model includes three main models trained simultaneously via an adversarial process. There are one generator to produce rainfall now casts and two discriminator to discriminate if the generated now casts are similar enough to the ground truth in terms of their spatial and temporal features. In this tutorial, we'll pay more attention to generator of the models. Before we get into the details, let's first see how deep learning and convolution works. This is an overview of this tutorial. How do deep learning work? Assume a simple data set. The data's distribution can be characterized with a simple function. But when the distribution gets more complex, it becomes more difficult to express this distribution. This is where deep learning comes in. In deep learning, we first design a complex function with random weights initially. Then we attempt to generate predictions with this function and calculate the distance between ground truths and predictions. This distance is what so-called loss. Iteratively, we update weights of the function and calculate the corresponding losses. The question is, how to update these weights? To understand how, let's get into the objective first. Our target is to fit a distribution of the data. In other words, we are trying to find a minimal loss. We can see from the figure that an ideal loss curve's gradient vector usually points out where minimal loss is. So in deep learning, we take the advantage of gradients. We calculate gradient of each weight then we multiply the, gra the gradient with learning rate, and we use this value to adjust these weights. We repeat this process until our expectations are fulfilled. Finally, we can conclude the workflow of deep learning. And the complex function is where DeepMind do their magic. Let's see how convolution works next. Assume a two-dimensional image and a convolution mask with weights that are yet to update. Doing convolution is to multiply the bounded pixel's value from the image and the weight of convolution masks. Then we sum these pixels' value up. This operation can be regarded as extracting spatial features in a scale of 3. After repeating this operation, we get a feature map. Now the basic concept of deep learning are explained. Let's look into the details of the model. The input frames go through these steps to generate a single output frame. The first step is space to depth. It reallocates dimension of height and width pixels to channel axis. After space to depth, the channel axis contains not only space temporal information, but also spatial information. To understand the power of space to depth, we need to learn how convolution works on space to depth image. To do convolution, we need to create more masks since the number of channels has increased in space to depth image. More convolution masks means more weights, so the model can be more descriptive. This is the first advantage of space to depth. Another advantage relates to spatial resolution. When doing convolution to space to depth image, we are actually extracting sparse spatial features scaling 5. Repeat this step, and we'll get a map with spatial features in scale 5. The same operation should be replicated on every channel of space to depth image then we'll get more, get more feature maps. Sum up these feature maps to get one final feature map. 
This final feature map contains the spatial features in 5 km scale and spatial features of neighboring pixels. After space to depth, the input goes through a lot of d-blocks. Each d-block contains a convolution with two kernel sizes. These convolutions are conducted in parallel, generated separate outputs, then sum these outputs up. After doing convolution, the feature maps will be conducted with space to depth. Because of the space to depth operations, each D block can extract features in different spatial extent. The convolution in kernel size 1 is able to extract features from a rectangular region with 2x2 two two area. The convolution in kernel size 3 is able to extract features from a 6x6 six six area. Since we already know the, that each pixel of feature map out of first D block contains spatial features covering 6x6 six six area, we can obtain that convolution in kernel size 3 of the second D block is able to capture spatial features covering a 8x8 eight eight area. And the convolution in kernel size 3 extract features in a 14x14 14 14 area. After a series of calculations, we can figure out off spatial features spatial extent. These outputs from the D block will then pass through a 3 by 3 convolution and we get features within spa larger spatial extent. Features in different levels of spatial extent are then passed into a convolution gated recurrent unit. Each convolution gated recurrent unit has two inputs and two outputs. This is an overview of the convolution gated recurrent unit. Each gated recurrent unit contains a convolution. The inputs of gated recurrent unit are hidden state and current state. Hidden state contains features accumulate from the first input frame to the input frame bef before the target time step, which can be regarded as a long-term impact. Con current state contains features from input frame only before the target time step, which can be regarded as immediate impact or short-term impact. Reset ratio deter is determined by hidden state, current state, and weights in reset gate. Output, or say, new current state, is determined by a resetted hidden state, current state, and weights in output gate. Update ratio is determined by hidden state, current state, and weight and output gate. The new hidden state is a summation of a portion of old hidden state and a portion of new current state. This is the flow of inputs and outputs in a convolution-gated recurrent unit. The hidden states are passing along time axis, and the noise is treated as current state which stands for the immediate impact on the output. The features in larger spatial extent pass through more convolution-gated recurrent units, enabling the larger spatial extent to make an impact on smaller spatial extents. Last but not least, let's see how GAN works. We can see the difference between GAN and a simple model. Deep generative model of radars uses two discriminators to train the generator. Finally, this is an experiment we conducted to see the difference between training this generator with and without GAN. We can definitely, definitely observe more spatial details in the one trained with GAN. This is the end of the tutorial. And this is the QR codes of my GitHub and our EDU abstract and also DeepMind's article. Feel free to write us an email and let us know if there's anything you want to discuss further. Thanks for watching.